All right. Uh, good morning, uh, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are. Um, my name is Jason Shepard. Uh, I am the VP of Ecosystem at a, a startup called Zadita. Um, we actually have a project within uh, LF Edge under the Linux Foundation umbrella. Uh, you know, our goal is to build the Android of the IoT Edge, and, and I'll talk about that as we go you know, within that project. Um, and then I'm also a board member for LF Edge, which, you know, like Cloud Native Compute Foundation, is a collection of complementary projects. And our whole goal is, is a overall organization is to um, harmonize across these open source projects, you know, necessarily different focus areas across this edge continuum. And um, I'd also highlight to stay tuned for a, an edge white paper that's uh, coming out soon um, from that community that um, you know, we, we participated in with the community. And so it uh, really helps to clarify things. So uh, we'll actually do a little uh, start by doing a little preview of that uh, from that white paper. So a lot of people out there are talking about um, you know, edge computing, you know, and some, there's some, you know, clickbait of like, oh, edge is going to replace the cloud. No, uh, it's a continuum. And so we're going to see, uh, uh, you know, the spectrum of compute across uh, uh, the landscape from sort of the constrained devices that live in the physical world, uh, you know, where people are and, and operations and processes and, and vehicles and, you know, you, you name it, machines. Um, to, of course, centralized data centers in the cloud. Um, so this, this diagram is from the LF Edge white paper. And it and it really kind of talks through what this continuum looks like, and you know it, it, it introduces concepts that are absolute inherent technical trade offs, inherent logistical trade offs, versus using these loaded terms as I call them, which is very common in the industry today. And this is why there's so much confusion about edge computing um, today. The um, you know you, you've got people saying, oh, it's near edge and far edge. That's a common you know explanation in the telco world. It's um, uh, thin and thick compute. So kind of like a gateway versus like a server uh, on-prem. And you know, while th that's fine, we're always better off to have very clear terms. And of course, this is just you know, language and whatnot. And, and what matters is the technologies and the outcomes that we're delivering for and customers and enabling through open source collaboration for, for those, those foundations. But it helps to get on the same page. And so this, this continuum, if you look at the right side, uh, you've got these centralized um, data centers in the cloud, you know, massively scalable. You know, and for the big public clouds, there's tens and you know, call it hundreds of, of, of those kind of uh, uh, um, resource pools. You've got the Internet edge and then you've, you're, we're seeing more and more compute moving left um, into uh, to be closer to the devices and, and users that need that those resources. You know, we define edge computing as moving compute uh, both as close or as close as both necessary and feasible to the resources that need it. In a perfect world, we put everything in the cloud and you know, get the benefits of centralization and the scale factor and all that. But there's a variety of factors of why we're seeing a need for more and more compute closer to the physical world. Um, you've got you know, certainly regional edge providers that are providing you know, um, you know, CDN networks and content uh, delivery networks, and and even the clouds are moving on the other side of the internet uh, edge uh, to to run data centers here to get a couple or a hop closer. We're seeing um, telcos, wireline operators, service providers in general creating more um, uh, compute. You know, literally a modular data center at the bottom of a cell tower to to feed up uh, stuff at um, you know to users like you know uh, your online st uh, video streaming is an example of that. So that we we reduce the latency and congestion on the upstream networks. So you just see the, the spectrum, and and we'll get into kind of the user edge in a, in a second. But at a top level. It, the service provider edge and the user edge are the the big categories that we have, and you you notice that there's a bleed here with this this uh, arrow angled line. If I'm a service provider and I run uh, equipment on the on prem, like in the form of uh, customer premise equipment, CPE equipment, then it bleeds into the user edge, and they, I push that last mile network um, boundary even further into the on prem scenario. And if I'm a, a, a user, you know, enterprise, or um, you know, in this case, if I'm an enterprise end user and I run a private data center up here on the right, then, I, then I'm basically bleeding into that right side. And the, the important delineator between these buckets on top is this last mile network. The, the, this is your, your, your cell connection, you know, satellite, if you're out in a oil well or a mine somewhere, you know, out in the ocean, um, it could be wire, wired you know, connectivity, et cetera. The reason why, as a community, we define this as a top-level delineation in the taxonomy is that is that there are certain things you just will never do over a wider, wide area network, even if your network is super reliable and super fast, like you know, five, say it's a 5G network. If you are doing latency-critical applications, meaning bad things happen if the message doesn't get there in time, 
or the action isn't taken, like, you know, deploying the airbag of your car, you know, applying the brakes, you will never do that over that last mile network. Anything that's latency critical will always be done, you know, locally. Anything that's latency sensitive, you tend to want to push upstream to take more advantage of the economies of scale from, from these other edges. So the, pa the paper that will come out next week goes through great detail in, in how this breaks down. But the reason why I'm running through it, it makes it really clear where Eve plays, you know, what we're doing. Once I get to the user edge, now I'm on the other side of the last mile network, everything just continues to get more and more complex, more and more custom software, more choices for protocols and hardware and OS and you know, form factor types and unique certifications and everything. It's pretty standardized infrastructure on the right. Not that it's trivial, you know, there's a lot of great innovation. Of course, Kubernetes has taken the world by storm on, on the right and it's kind of moving more, more and more left, including into on-prem data centers. So that first tier, sub-tier under the user edge, these are, these are data centers that have been on-prem for a long time. And you know, within that uh, context, I mean, there, there's moderately scalable compute. You're limited by the footprint, you know, available in real estate. You're limited by power and cooling and all that. Not going to be as scalable as the kind of the nearly infinite scalable in the centralized clouds, especially with the public clouds. But it's still, you know, good good level compute on prem on this side of the last mile network. So your latency um, you know, issues are less of a variable. Uh, even though, of course, five G, there's a lot of great things that are going to happen there. Big difference, though, between this and the other edges is it is still in a physically secure data center. I'm locked up, you know, whether I'm in a, a traditional data center or in a micro data center. These are secure locations. OK, the next tier over what we call the smart device edge in this taxonomy. Uh, this includes both IoT type devices, you know, gateways or even a server on a factory floor or out in a, a oil rig somewhere. Uh, you know, headless IoT components, and then you, of course, have PCs and smartphones and client devices in general and you know, tablets, whatever. Uh, PCs and smartphones, very well established ecosystem. Of course, we've got Android and iOS in the smartphone world. Um, you know, these devices uh, in the smart device edge, anything, whether it's IoT or client side, two characteristics that make it um, the smart device edge. Number one, I am outside of a physically secure data center. I could be in a closet, so semi semi secure. Uh, I could be just sitting, you know, out in the wild in your pocket. You know, in the case of a phone, I'm, I'm a, 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 a IoT gateway sitting, you know, in a building somewhere, like in the closet or or you know, out in the open. They're physically accessible, so now you have to have unique security needs that you're not necessarily considering around you know, on the, the data center. You have uh, you need to have like a zero trust model to where you trust nobody. you start to uh, you know, build trust relationships with various different um, um, entities. Uh, uh, the scale factor is getting bigger. Uh, you, you need to have things that run autonomously regardless of whether they're connected um, to the, uh, uh, the internet or not. Um, you, know, you could have a gateway in a, a, on an oil rig or some sort of server on an oil rig that you lose this connection for days, if not a week. And it needs to run autonomously while it's, uh, and then whenever it can phone back home to the, the uh, central controller, it, it gets any updates it needs to, to have. So just different needs, you know, at, at this smart device edge. And, you know, uh, IoT components tend to be upload centric. I'm getting data from the physical world. I'm doing some pre-processing pre -processing here at this edge, and I'm moving it up to, uh, for further processing upstream. And then client devices, you know, like phones and TVs and PCs, they tend to be download centric. I'm downloading content. You know, of course, if I'm doing cloud based gaming, I'm, I'm kind of I need latency that's low either way. So, you know, it's just it's just outside of a physically secure data center, but still capable of running apps and abstraction like virtualization or containerization. Once I get to the lower uh, side um, of the smart device edge, I get into the constrained device edge. Now, this is basically I'm out in the wild. I'm microcontroller based and I'm so constrained that I can't run apps anymore. I'm, I'm doing embedded software. You know, this is over the air update tools that are almost custom for every piece of silicon. You know, we've got great efforts out there like what, what uh, Azure, you know, Microsoft is doing with Azure Sphere OS, you know, trying to uh, you know, build like the uh, uh, more of a stable uh, ecosystem for microcontroller based devices. You've got folks, you know, like uh, Foundries.io that's doing that in the open source sense. And, and there's a lot of you know, cool stuff happening, but it's really, really messy here. But at that smart device edge, and of course, on the further ones up, you can, you can create abstraction um, uh, with a small tax. You can create abstraction and make things more platform independent. So, you know, I, I know this is a lot of setup, but, but really important stuff. And, and again, the, the paper gets into great detail. So think of Project Eve that we'll switch focus to. You know, this is, um, this is you know, do for, for the IoT edge as part of that smart device edge what Android did for the mobile component of that smart device edge. 
very fragmented. Um, you, you need to be able to support all these different technologies. We want to create within this project, within LF Edge, a universal abstraction engine for uh, this, this type of uh, edge compute hardware. It, it, it's not, I'm not going to say it's just a gateway. It could be a gateway. It could be a server. It could be a hub, a, a router, any kind of hardware that's capable of supporting um, you know, a, 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 an abstraction layer. And then, of course, on top of that, you run apps in the form of VMs and containers. You can think of this spectrum as 256 megs of memory or so. You know, uh, that's what we aspire to. Below that, you're starting to get so constrained that you have to go into you know, embedded. And, and devices over here could have kilobytes of memory, you know, uh, for sure. Uh, 256 megs on a single node of memory, you know, give or take, maybe 512, uh, up to a small server cluster. Now we have. You know, Kubernetes is coming from down here, down this way. There's a great work happening with K3S out in the market. Uh, as a project, we started with the kind of sweet spot of the IoT component of the smart device edge, you know, Project Eve, and we're bridging up to the Kubernetes space. Now, very important too is to not look at it as Kubernetes, you know, is going to carte blanche just get dropped on these more constrained devices outside of a physical data center. What we'll see is a subset of the key capabilities that make it attractive, like clustering and stuff like that. But you're not necessarily going to see a one for one relationship. There are just different needs across this continuum, and it's about um, finding the right balance. And so, so again, check out the white paper. It's 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 really really good read, and it and it really breaks this down into inherent trade offs that you can't change versus using loaded terms. Um, you know, I joke that when you know near and far is being used a lot, and I mean it's it's fine, and we talk about that. We kind of map those terms. So near and far, if you ever seen that the Sesame Street, um, you know, with Grover, and he, and he does like near and far, and uh, it, it, you know, I kind of joke that that's that's these loaded terms are are just confusing and 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 whatnot. So anyway, so that's where we play. We play at the IoT component of the smart device edge. Do for IoT what Android did for mobile. So a big part of LF Edge, this community of projects, I think we're, we're up to nine projects um, you know, now. And, and a big part of this is, is all about how do I create various different levels of abstraction within the, the landscape? Um, you know, obviously, open source in general is about a shared technology investment. You know, we've, I partnered with Linux Foundation for a long time on various things. I, I helped uh, with a, a team at, at Dell get a project called EdgeX Foundry started, with it, which is also now within LF Edge. You know, it's, it just hit 5 million downloads, and we started with a blank sheet of paper in 2015. And, and that's, that's just an example of the power of open source. Of course, Kubernetes is taking the world by storm. It's just super awesome stuff there, and we look forward to bridging you know, Eve to, to that, that story with the right considerations. LF Edge as a whole is a collection of projects that are all about shared technology investment, minimize for end users, developers, et cetera, you know, the undifferentiated heavy lifting that's happening out in the market today. So we can all focus on value, you know, drive interoperability, uh, drive these various different layers of, of abstraction. I'll talk about how this is important to get to the real time potential. Just because you can build stuff on your own doesn't mean you should. You need to be part of a bigger open ecosystem and you, you need to be able to have choice in this, this market. And so th these are principles for IoT edge scale. So rule number one, I, I want to abstract all these different layers of, of technology and services and smarts, you know, domain knowledge from the underlying infrastructure. You know, I always, I always joke like, when's the last time your ERP system uh, manages your PCs? You, you don't do that. But in you know, the IoT wave that, that, that's, that came from 2014-ish you know, till now and it continues to go, but now we're talking edge and of course AI and, and you know, 5G and all these different tool sets. Uh, you know, of course, it's about customer outcomes first and foremost, but what we saw in the market, you know, and even when, when I've been looking at this for five years, I've, I've been doing this for a while, um, initially what happens in any new market is it's people that have built like a, a platform of some sort and attached it to some sort of dom domain knowledge um, you know, gets that initial traction. I know more than you'd ever need to know about cold chain, you know, grocery store monitoring or monitoring wellheads out in the wild or whatever. And they built technology for the sake of just getting to data and providing an outcome for a customer, but they didn't really need to. What they need is domain knowledge and necessarily unique hardware and, and software applied to consistent infrastructure. And so as things evolve in, in IoT and edge and, and, and digital transformation in general, what we need is a roster of pure play solutions that that plug into more of a consistent infrastructure. Imagine, you know, if one company owned the Internet, you know, probably would have wouldn't have worked out the same as, as the massive innovation that's uh, happened since the Internet you know, uh, really came alive. 
Um, so you want tools that are that are running on top of consistent infrastructure. Of course, Eve is about providing that for the IoT edge, as explained in that, that previous slide. Um, in the end, the winners will be those that leverage you know uh, uh, shared technology investment for the base. Um, open source is becoming rapidly the the or has become I'd say the the way to drive you know, de facto standards in the industry compared to traditional standards bodies, um, you know interoperability all that kind of stuff that LF Edge is working on. The winners will be people with the best services, the best algorithms, the best you know necessarily unique hardware and apps, um, domain knowledge. Not the hundredth person this week to reinvent invent the middle. That is not valuable, and so this is a big part of uh, LF Edge. And so the second key principle is that you want to untether. You know, you know, not have a hard coupling between the, your data and any backend service. It says cloud services here, but it could just as well be on-prem system. If you take control of your data the moment it's created in, in the physical world, and all data pretty much originates from people or devices in the physical world, if I decouple that from any given backend service the moment it's created, and this is the point of EdgeX Foundry, of course, there's there's Fledge with an LF Edge, and there's some, uh, a lot of other projects. This is, um, you know, Eve is about that rule number one, kind of abstracting infrastructure from the apps. If you make that uncoupling the moment it's created, then all permutations along that continuum from edge to cloud work. You can choose to pump all your data to one public cloud. Great, they're doing awesome stuff. If that's not right for you, or inevitably you're going to need a multi-tenant edge where you send data to multiple clouds uh, from, from your data source. You maybe have different part suppliers hitting the same factory floor. Um, you've got a service provider coming in to work with you in your building in a build, building automation sense. All permutations work and you don't get locked in at that point. So this is an abstraction you know, with some of the projects within LF Edge that's, that, that we're creating both interoperability for this and um, that abstraction to prevent lock-in. You know, I liken it to you know, don't use the email address from the internet provider you have. Use use something that's abstracted like, you know, you know Gmail or something like that, you know, any, any kind of abstracted email. It's, it's so you feel like you can you can make a switch on, on the internet if you need to. But just, you know, decoupling that edge from the cloud. Um, first one's decoupling layers in the stack. This one's decoupling the edge from, from any given cloud, and then all permutations work. The last one is about this notion of how you architect for cloud native. So cloud native is more about how you build and deploy software, not where it's run. You know, so, so cloud native doesn't mean it only happens in the cloud. Um, you know, we talk about this in the paper uh, from the LF Edge community, again, look for it next week, but um, with the taxonomy, you want to extend this notion of uh, these principles. So, so platform independent software, I can run on any, any hardware, whether it's ARM or x86 based and, and uh, various different capabilities across that spectrum. This is, of course, you know, what Eve is about creating that abstraction for that. Uh, I want to plan on continuous integration, you know, and delivery. So CICD, you know, I, I, I need to recognize the technical trade-offs, uh, you know, that, that I, I elaborated on, you know, in good detail on that first slide, you know, more and more constrained hardware, the closer I get to the physical world, I've got time critical applications. If you're, if you're, if you need, if you're time critical and you need, um, uh, uh, you know, a real-time operating system and it's embedded, you're not going to necessarily be running, you know, modularized apps on top, um, but you could be running next to something that is where you consolidate on common infrastructure. So we're seeing, you know, a trend there where you see kind of like soft PLCs, pro programmable logic controllers running next to analytics apps. But that's going to uh, transform over time. You'll see this sort of physical to virtual split between the operations technology environments, you know, that have been running for a long time, but not connected to the back end. And you, of course, the IT services that do things you know, around the business and, you know, kind of keep keep uh, things running, you know, date from a data security standpoint. Uh, there is a definite evolution happening today between OT and IT operations technology and, and information technology. Uh, it's not to say e either group does, you know, only does what, you know, one thing versus the other, but there are different needs. If there is a issue from a security standpoint or just downtime in general, there's immediate loss of production. It could even be you know, a safety issue in the OT world. Meanwhile, in the IT world, if there's immediate, you know, if there's a loss or a, a hack, you can generally speaking, just shut down the IT network and sorry, you can't get to you know, your email or whatever. Um, so you have to recognize these trade-offs. Most, many OT folks that have been running factories for a long time or any kind of process in the physical world you know, the, the catch 22 of industrial IT is to connect those systems in a very segmented way. You cannot, you're not going to connect your, your controllers right up to the cloud. You'll have, you know, layered, uh, 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 network layered layers on top. But you punch through these different systems to get data to back end, um, solutions, whether they're on prem or in the cloud. 
And you also recognize the fact that someone might not be ready for continuous delivery of software to the factory floor you know, above those control systems today. But if you architect for it, for it today, you're ready when you have to as, as people start to innovate around you. So we think it's really important to invest in, in solutions that kind of leverage these principles across the board. And, and, and again, LF Edge as a open source uh, you know, organization, the umbrella within Linux Foundation you know, is driving towards this. Uh, you know, us as a private company and other companies you know, within the, the, the landscape are working on these types of things. You know, we think that it's, it's super important to have like this open ecosystem. And so that's just that's just the basics, you know, just to get started. You know, don't get locked in, get on this path towards more of an open interoperable ecosystem. So that's just kind of the basics. But where does this head you know, over time? So, you know, the market was just crazy number of platforms and everyone's trying to build these silos. Um, and and great, you know, we, we want to start small. Let's not get crazy here. But long term, the real potential in digital transformation is this notion of interconnecting ecosystems. You know, I've, I've been blogging about this for a long time. You know, of course, I believe in open. I've been working in EdgeX Foundry with a bunch of great people in the open source community for a long time. Um, and of course, I, part of the reason I joined uh, Zadita is because because the the um, this notion of uh, you know another layer below you know like like an EdgeX or a Fledge uh, of abstraction. If you want to get to the real potential, and this is B to X to X, whether it's B to B to C, B to B, whatever, across heterogeneous ecosystems, I'm connecting between you know supply chain, you know, in a grocery store, and the end user in their in their house. I want to bring insurance services into the home, like Snapshot for the home, like like they do for your car. Uh, I want to do you know retailers. I want to enable retailers to come into into the home, um, you know, to kind of get on a level playing field across the board. Um, you know, any of these things. You know, businesses. You know, across the supply chain, I have multiple stakeholders. If you really want to scale this, you have to have an open foundation across all of these different you know uh, forums, and for that, you must have um, you know this this kind of openness and trust factor. So LF Edge is building this. There's some new efforts, Trust Over IP Foundation with Linux Foundation. I helped launch, uh, kind of pre-launch a project called Alvarium that we're going to be working on this stuff. You know, this is about creating competence and data as it flows across heterogeneous networks where you can kind of really develop new business models over time. You know, granted, let's start with a small use case and, 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 and whether it's IoT or otherwise, apply some AI model or whatever, get started. But don't forget about the real potential, because when you're cutting costs, there's a lower limit to how far you can go. When you're making new money across all of these different domains, the sky is the limit. So super important to be thinking today about how you architect. And again, like, like I said, imagine if just a couple companies, if not one, own the internet. It would not work. We need to make it democratized and build trust in through through collaboration. And, and to do trust, of course, there's root of trust at the hardware level, which, which Eve builds in. We've got a bunch of different capabilities that we'll talk about, but then you've also got things like, um, of course, ledger technologies, immutable storage, um, confidential computing. There's all kinds of trust insertion technologies that you can use, and that's what uh, Project Alvarium and, and some other initiatives, Trust Over IP Foundation, is about kind of vetting. And, and it's just about industry collaboration on that base, building that trust foundation, and then let's go, you know, let's go figure out how we make money around. Um, you know that, those interconnected ecosystems. So super important to be thinking about this, even if you want to start small. I, I joke, I, you know, holy grail of digital is selling stuff to strangers. As I've written about this at length, you know, online. Um, you know, we've got to scale to the grail. So, you know, start small and scale to the grail is, is you know, one of my taglines. So very important to think about long term. Okay, so I've already kind of explained you know what Eve is a bit, but you know, again, think of Project Eve as do for that IoT edge what Android did for mobile. So we want to make it easy to orchestrate you know these devices. We want to provide a security layer, and so it's bare metal that, that lowest layer. Um, this is all about distributed hardware out in the field. It's outside of a physically secure data center. I don't necessarily own the network. I can't trust that I have a firewall. So I need a zero trust model. I have a distributed firewall capability where I can tell, say, this app can only talk to that cloud, and this, you know, this app can only talk to that app on that box, you know, et cetera. Um, I need to support both virtual machines and containers, and we're exploring, you know, stuff with unikernels. But, but you know, lots of legacy stuff out there that's running still on, you know, older flavors of Windows, uh, maybe a SCADA system, a point of sale uh, uh, app in a, a retail store. I need to be able to kind of run that stuff. This is not about dumping all your existing, you know, capital expenses or, or you know, um, uh, expenditures, but all the modern stuff, you know, it's not like you wouldn't use VMs too, but but most, many things now are, are in containers. And then of course, K Kubernetes is, has taken the world by storm. So you need to be able to run, you know, existing apps and VMs, you need to be able to run containers, um, you need to be able to have those security elements. And we'll talk through that, you know, in more detail. And you also need, for all the reasons I've been talking about, 
complete choice over hardware that you run on applications and, and clouds, uh, you know, backends, whatever, that all the abstraction layer. So Eva is that lower level abstraction layer. And then you choose the applications you want to run on top and the clouds you want to connect to. You choose the um, hardware that you run on, whether it's ARM or x86 based. And ultimately, Eve is really just as much as like an EdgeX. It's about those open APIs that are shaped through that open source collaboration. Um, and those APIs work with the controller of your choice. Now, you know, Zedata, we have our own controller. We welcome anybody to go build one. We have a, a simple uh, open source controller, you know, in in um, in the market uh, or in the, the the project. And we're actually collaborating with some other projects within LF Edge that that you know are somewhat competitive on the back end. But we're all better off if we we focus on creating that universal foundation. That, that helps to abstract the complexity and, and, and um, help with vendor lock-in. So there's a there's a page called uh, uh, Eve, Eve on Market at the project site. Um, you just type in you know, Project B Eve LF Edge, you'll find it, and and it, it lists what hardware we, we're supporting. We're working with a bunch of different hardware providers, you know, out, out there. And, and then of course, you know, as more and more controllers get added, you know, that'll be there. But you know, the point here is that that open API between the uh, whatever controller, whether it's on-prem or in the cloud. And Project Eve is that lower level abstraction layer sitting on top of whatever hardware you choose. Is that that open API is the insurance policy that you are not going to get locked into a particular controller. And then parallel to that orchestration plane, you choose the apps and clouds that you want. Uh, Eve, you know, from a project standpoint, you know, in our own personal company, we believe it's very important to not try to be in the data path. You're in control of your data, and of course, you want to abstract that as close to the edge as possible, so all permutations work. So that's that's you know kind of like what is Project Eve? Um, you know, again, do for IoT what what Android did for mobile. You know, layers of abstraction, support um, support you know VMs and containers, uh, make it very easy to deploy. So you know, when the as you get outside of data centers and you have less uh, you know IT skill sets, people that are used to working with servers and virtualization and all that. Uh, you need to make it very easy to onboard devices. So, so literally with Eve, you know, as you as you put it out there, you can you could you know install it on a box. You ship it to a location along with some sensors. The person you know, installs it, you know, connects it to the network, scans the the QR code, and, and then it logs it onto the controller, or whatever of choice that you're using. And and Eve doesn't do some of those value add that we think that's where the community comes into play. You know, the value add of the Q, the apps and all that. Um, that's the zero touch easy button. But Eve has the hooks to enable that stuff, which is super important when you have a um, variety of skill sets out in the field that are doing um, you know, uh, field uh, repair and, and upgrades and you know, deploying new services. Uh, ARM x86, uh, we support you know, various different coprocessors. So if you're using GPUs, FPGAs, TPUs, uh, very important here is that there's a lot of tools out there that are coming from various different um, providers, and you just want to have something that has kind of a universal story so that you're not locked into any given uh, choice. And so, and again, I mentioned that we're striving to make it, you know, with a meaningful app running on top, you know, down to a, a single node with 256 megs of memory. Uh, we're comfortable at like a gig today, maybe 512, and it of course depends on what you're running on top. Um, I mean, you know, Raspberry Pi 4 comes with, you know, these days eight gigs of memory. So, you know, it's, things are changing, but um, you know, we know some people that want to run, you know, lighter memory, but there's a tax that you pay for the abstraction, which is super valuable because uh, it simplifies things. And we, of course, in Eve have the, the concept of you know, a failover. Um, there's a blue and green partition. So as you're updating something, it runs autonomously you know, with, with the current you know, setup. And only after you've proven that it's you know, running after a certain number of amount of time does it switch over. And there's also always multiple copies of Eve running on a given box. So it's all about uptime, which is super important in the, uh, in, in the, um, you know, the, the OT world. And, and, and really, it's like this, this IoT edge needs, you know, a standardized foundation, you know, of course, open source, you know, Android in the open source sense um, for orchestration. It's, it's flexible, you know, open and agnostic, you know, kind of one stack that you need that takes into all the accounts that are those challenges that, that we talked about at length in that first slide, um, but, but done for the IoT edge. And so that's, that's what Eve's about. And we've been seeing, you know, good growth in the, the community. So just to make sure that it's clear on these uh, the, the 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 architectural approaches. So, you know, if you take Eve on the left, then we'll compare it to some some uh, various different uh, choices. So, proprietary bare metal. There's a number of solutions out there. You know, good solutions, but um, when it's bare metal, you get benefits because you're tightly coupled to the hardware around security. You know, um, you can tie into root of trust. You can tie into um, you know stuff around measure boot and attestation and kind of grounds up security functions. You know, you can sit. You're sitting between the the OSs and the apps, uh, and it, you know, whether they're VMs or containerized, 
and the hardware so you can literally turn on and off ports you know and do distributed firewall type stuff so it's great but the proprietary versions cause lock-in to that person's controller that company's controller and so if that's fine for you cool but in this world because of all the reasons mentioned before it's really important to have those those abstraction points um you know most of the solutions out there commercially or even open source tend to kind of fall into the camp of modern we support containers or we only support vms uh, generally there's there's much more container focus in the um in the in the uh, open source world these days with, with kubernetes and beyond just docker and, and, and the like and then of course there's data center solutions out there that are proprietary that are great great offers but they're just not built for the iot edge the constrained nature of it this idea that I don't have physical security, I don't have network security, I don't have a pipe. You know, most IT data center solutions presuppose that you have a constant connection to your controller. In the IoT edge or even the constrained device edges, the smart device edge and constrained device edge, you quite likely do not have a, a, a um, constant connection. So you need to have what, what we call a, you know, an eventual consistency model. So you set the, the state that you want in the um, the controller, whether it's on prem or in the back end, um, that communicates with Eve. And whenever Eve, uh, an Eve enabled device phones home, it says, "What am I supposed to have? What what versions of everything?" You work to get up to date. You know, it, it does it in a separate partition, and then once once you've checked everything, then it switches over. And if it doesn't succeed in that update, it keeps running the way it was because you have to focus on uptime. So anyway, so there there's some unique things for the IoT edge, uh, and and of course, um, you know, we think that openness really matters. And then you've got an agent-based solution. So the bottom right. So this is another approach that we see commonly out there in the market. Um, so this is agent, an agent that connects to the controller that has APIs. And if it's open source, you, you could have an open API, or you could have a closed if it's proprietary, it just depends. But that agent then communicates through the OS into the hardware. And the, the challenge with this is that if you have an agent without integration, deep integration into that OS and hardening of that OS, uh, you might have security gaps. You don't get those benefits of the bare metal foundation like, like Eve has or even the proprietary ones have in terms of security and networking functions. If you don't do that integration between the agent and the OS, you could likely brick that device out in the field. And that's bad news if you're out in the uh, uh, middle of nowhere, you know, and you're rolling a truck out there to update that device. You just spent a $1,000, uh, you know, to roll that truck out. Or, you know, we have customers, you know, in the commercial sense that are doing wind turbines. And, I mean, you could spend 100000 50 to $100,000 to get it for the day to get a helicopter out there and, and all the, the logistics associated with that. So you do not want to brick devices out in the field. Um, these solutions tend to only support containers if it's an OS. If it's an, an abstraction layer, of course, you've got solutions out there that support VMs. Um, proprietary locks people in. But I would actually say that an agent-based solution could run on Eve by le leveraging the APIs that are brought up through Eve. And if you do tight integration between that agent and the OS, well, guess what? You just built Project Eve. And so, so that's why we think this is the best blend for, for kind of enabling edge computing at the IoT edge a completely open API, um, vendor neutral governance through the Linux Foundation. We think that's important. There's, you know, there's open source all over the place, but if you don't have that neutral governance, you cannot build trust because of the necessary transparency. Again, we support both containers and VMs. You can't brick the device during updates because it's at that lowest level and it's optimized for this uh, constrained hardware, you know, outside of a physically secure data center, gateways, servers, or otherwise. So that's 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 why we think as a project, you know, community, we're building up, you know, the right approach. Um, you know, it's, and it's not to say there's not other good solutions out there, but we just think this is the way to go and and kind of do do for IoT Edge what Android did for mobile, as as I keep mentioning. So you know, in terms of use cases, I've got a variety of different uh, ways. To do. These are kind of more of the horizontal use cases. It's certainly applicable in many markets. You know, manufacturing, industrial, oil and gas, energy, retail, healthcare, you name it. You know, we've seen you know folks from all walks of life you know uh, working with it. Um, the, the workload consolidation. So this is basically I take a, a compute resource, could be a gateway or server or otherwise cluster, small cluster as mentioned. Um, but in the case, say, call it a, a, a an IoT gateway. I'm running Eve on top. You know, I ship Eve out. I, I provision it. I've got my choice of controller in the back end or you know, on-prem, just a remote controller. And I want to lift and shift legacy applications. So if I'm in a manufacturing world, I might have like a, a legacy Windows application that, run, that has to run in a VM and I don't have to you know, reinvent it, but I can just put it on the same workloads as maybe next to it I'm running um, you know, one of the clouds, uh, you know, the edge solutions for one of the clouds, or I'm running an EdgeX you know, foundry connected to my choice of back end. I'm, I'm running Fledge or whatever, you know, other projects within LF Edge. 
um, you know, I, I, you know, pushing AI models down. So I'm like kind of, you know, uh, 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 this you know, hybrid workload. So that's kind of one use case, um, you know, it helps you reuse your existing investments while investing in kind of modern new cloud native apps alongside it, Eve's the common base. We've seen a number of people using Eve in another model where it's, it's less about running apps and it's more about secure data access. I mean, I literally use Eve as a base for an appliance that then does secure network proxy. And I'm pulling data out of um, machines or wind turbines out in the in the wild and and pumping that to whatever uh, you know. We're just we would just as a project be that 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 lower level abstraction and then you use your choice of controller. What's not shown here is uh, is a, is whatever the back end is. But um, you know, again, Eve is not in the data path. We're not trying to get the the data to you know uh, our controller or, or uh, open source or otherwise. It's about the orchestration and then you choose where it goes. And the last one, edge security analytics. So this is similar to the first one, but I'm not in band with the data per se. I'm out of band. So maybe I have a box that has a span port and I'm sniffing traffic. It, maybe I'm putting a intrusion detection system or some sort of you know, active you know, AI-based, ML-based threat analytics. I'm, I'm, I'm monitoring traffic. I'm triggering events if something you know, you know, fishy is going on, but I'm not in the data path. And again, you know, Eve and, and whatever controller you use is, provides that universal abstraction layer. So this is about gaining visibility about what's happening on your network. And so, you know, we see all kinds of different use cases and of course, different markets and, and whatnot, but these are sort of the, the patterns that we see, the, the deployment patterns that we see. So we've got all these features in there. You know, I, I've been mentioning a lot of them. It's that root of trust element tied to TPM. If you don't have TPM available, we can virtualize that through, through Eve. You know, it provides that, you know, the distributed firewall capability, those open APIs for managing the container objects or, or the, 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 the edge compute objects, whether they're containers or VMs, lots of detail online. You know, about the project, you're welcome to go to the wiki and, and dig in, download the code, go to town. Um, and this roadmap's also online, but you know, just the name of the game for the, the project as a community, and we run regular TSCs, there's a link I think at the end of this, is, is to continue to build out that framework. Um, you may always strive to reduce the footprint. I mentioned 256 you know, is the kind of the lower uh, extreme that, of megs of memory is that we're seeing. Um, you know, we, we, we're a little higher than that today, but, but you know, uh, we've got all these extra features, you know, and, and, and of course, if you don't need um, VM support for legacy, uh, you can actually, we've modularized that, that um, hypervisor, so you can actually use your choice, of, not only your choice of hypervisor, but also, you know, not use that if it's only, you're only needing containers. We're not trying to reinvent anything. You know, we've adopted recently Container D as sort of like the, uh, the which is the most popular runtime for containers. Um, we've adopted that. Um, you know, certainly we work with with um, you know Docker, and, and as I mentioned, we're we're starting to evolve into support for Kubernetes uh, by by bridging to the great work happening in K3s. But we're not going to do it carte blanche. We're going to do it in a way that makes sense for the IoT edge, and especially makes sense in the case of having the right security elements underneath, because because these are devices that are not in the uh, in a physically secure area, and so, so you have unique considerations. You know, I mentioned the modular hypervisor support. We initially, we were opinionated on on Zen hypervisor as a community. Um, uh, we've had we had folks out in the um, you know the, the landscape asking about KVM, so we modularized it and made KVM support. Um, there's an open source uh, hypervisor effort um, that Intel has been leading the development of in the community, building around um, this this real time uh, hypervisor called Acorn. Uh, very lightweight, and and that can help su supply uh, support mixed criticality workloads. So, so you know a mixture of time critical and and more um, um, you know, time sensitive workloads. Uh, and then we're just always looking at new new ways of creating kind of north south east west you know uh, communication capabilities between different edge nodes, edge to cloud. Um, but you know in this case, edge to edge data flow. So that's like between different compute nodes at the same tier. So. Uh, all about starting, you know, where customers are at today. They need to be able to support legacy, and then also, you know, uh, containers. But then also at the same time, uh, evolving to not reinvent stuff. You know, take from various upstream and downstream projects, but create kind of that one-stop shop, the one stack that you need to pre-install on hardware and ship it out, and then you take advantage of an open ecosystem of, of value add. And, and so that's, you know, we think it's super important you know, for all the reasons I've been you know, mentioning. Uh, of course, you know, we, you can't, uh, you, nobody, you're not, you're not anyone if you don't have Raspberry Pi support. So, um, uh, uh Stefano from Xilinx, and you know, there's some blogs that we're going to be doing about this, but, um, you know, uh, and some others, you know, help build this, this, uh, 
image for the Raspberry Pi 4. So you can get that today. There's a link in here. Um, if you just search online, you'll find it. You know, uh, But basically, you can get EVE running on a Raspberry 4. 4. You can go work with the controller of choice. There's some, some controllers coming that will be, um, you know, kind of come with dev kits and stuff. But you, know, you take your pick, um, you know, build your own controller if you'd like. Uh, there's a, a very simple controller today, as I mentioned. Um, but yeah, this is this is good for kind of tinkering and start to kind of build the solution with your choice of value add around you know very low cost uh, point of entry. So uh, definitely check that out. And you know again, thanks to you know Adam and the community or um, uh, Stefano and the community for contributing that support. So um, we actually talked about this on a webinar that you should be able to find uh, um, you know online um, recently about Eve. So anyway, so really cool there. And if, and there's lots of other hardware from companies like Advantech and Lanner and Supermicro and and um, you know, uh, uh, on Logic, Dell, you, you name it, HPE, um, you know, all on that even market page. So just t t take a look and, and um, you know, uh, uh, get involved if if, uh, if it makes sense. So we'd love to have you. Speaking of kind of involvement, you know, we've, uh, as a community, we've grown to uh, almost 50 unique contributors. Um, I mean, literally the last time I updated this, it was 40 and that was a couple months ago. Uh, you know, I mentioned Xilinx, Xilinx uh, Stefano with Xilinx and some others were doing great work on the, the Zen stuff, um, you know, related to the Raspberry Pi. Uh, we're working with Intel around Acorn and there's other providers that are making contributions. Of course, you know, Zedita, um, you know, as, as uh, a company, we, we contributed Eve. Um, we have a commercial controller, but at the same time, like I've said before, we firmly believe that it's best for the community, for the overall market to have a completely open foundation. That's why we put it into Linux Foundation versus open source it on our own. And then that allows a community to transparently develop that. And then of course, you know, we'll offer a commercial controller, but we welcome others to do the same because it's just, it's just you, know, uh, 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 you know, rising tides float all boats type thing. So we've seen Eve deployed in various different use cases. So you know, wind turbines, as I mentioned, that secure proxy is, is was an example there. Uh, we've seen people exploring it and, and leveraging it in hospitals. Um, so say I'm a, a medical imaging manufacturer, a machine manufacturer. I've got these imaging machines I put into hospitals as a service for my customers, but I don't own the network that they're sitting on. I'm out. I'm, I'm in the 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 room where the patients are. I'm, I'm not in the data center. Uh, I'm trying to do you know me medical imaging to deploy analytics models for those machines, but I don't I don't know what the network looks like. So I need distributed firewall. I need zero trust uh, a model in general. So we see that in manufacturing plants, we've seen people use Eve not only to do workload consolidation, but also just to securely create a segmented network to get data into some sort of cloud application. And so these network overlays over the process, you know, at all costs protect the process, but I need to pull data out to get to some other system for further analytics and just visibility in general. And, and because of the um, uh, distributed firewall capabilities and all that that lower level functionality because of the bare metal foundation, I'm able to do that. And then of course, in oil and gas, you know, you've got wells out in the, in the middle of, um, you know, remote locations and, and people are using it, you know, deploy AI models to, to run predictive maintenance. Uh, we've got folks, you know, the wind turbine fo uh, folks are using um, models to listen for um, flaws and, in, in, you know, potential um, issues with those turbines. And, and it's really about collaborating with various other project, uh, projects as we go. Uh, so hopefully this demo works. This is uh, actually Sarah from, from the Zadita team. This was at a conference um, where we were presenting with other LF Edge projects. And so hopefully this video works in terms of audio, but you're kind of a quick um, you know, demo. This was with uh, some part, uh, uh, the Fledge project within LF Edge and just kind of showing how um, you know, Eve comes together as that orchestration layer. Edge's Project Eve on a wind farm use case. This is based on a customer using Eve who has about 5,000 wind turbines. And what they've done is they have sensors that are in their wind turbine that are attached to a small gateway box running Project Eve software. On top of that software, which virtualizes the hardware network and application layer, you have a small application that's translating the sensor data and then sending it in real time to a Pi server that I have here so that I can see any maintenance data, I can get vibration information, information about temperature, humidity, things like that that might tell me the general health of my wind turbine, um, making it very easy for me to know in real time what to have. I also put with this box and Eve very easily add other applications beyond my, my application running my wind turbine sensor information. I very easily go into the 
the interface. You don't need the My Catalog. And from here, I could choose an application such as Hedgex Foundry and very easily be able to deploy that out to my, my box as well. Okay, I, I saw in the chat that you guys didn't see the video. I'm, I'm watching it here, but that video is online. Uh, of course, Sarah's talking about, um, okay, so maybe it is working. Um, not not sure if some folks had an issue, but that video is online um, and, and Sarah's really talking about a use case, but you know, the, the Eve component in that is providing that abstraction uh, layer. Okay, so you saw you saw a picture of Sarah and, and, and her talking. So anyway, so, so um, you know, that's, that's uh, uh, kind of, we just decided not to uh, try to do a live demo um, you know, over this platform, but um, anyway, check it out. Uh, get involved. Hi, I'm Sarah uh, oops, hold on. <laughs> There's a lot of links here. Uh, if you just type in LF Edge Eve, you'll find you'll find um, you know, a bunch of detail. Uh, all of the technical steering committee meetings are open. You know, of course, this, the value of L, uh, the Linux Foundation in general is is the governance that they provide, all those extra services. And the, but then we we work as a community. Of course, you know, we'd love folks to join um, LF Edge as a member. Um, but it's a technical meritocracy, so you just get involved, and, and the best way to vote is with code. And uh, you know, all the wikis and stuff are, are here. And so, you know, with that, I I don't know if there's any questions. Um, and uh, we um, we uh, I think you know we'll kind of move to any questions um, as you guys have it uh, after I kind of summarize. So so the, the summary, you know, we talked at length about how the the edges, the IoT edge is unique. There is no single edge; it's a continuum. Um, very, very unique, and, and it's not the same as the data center. You want similar principles, but they're necessarily different tools because of the diversity of hardware and software and protocols and, and the re resource constraints that need to be autonomous in operation. Um, you know, you've got different degrees of latency. Is it latency critical or latency sensitive? Pe too many people just say latency. Too many people say real time. Real time to a buildings operator uh, is 15 minutes usually real time to a airbag well, a little faster. Um, the security elements uh, I talked at length about the you know, scale factor, tens of massive public clouds, eventually trillions of constrained devices, and then a smart device edge is somewhere in between, and it's an exponential scale. So really important to think about the scale factor, think about all these constraints. Again, you know we're we're talking 256 memory uh, uh, megs of memory, single node up to a small cluster, but we'll do Kubernetes right, and we've got lots of stuff spinning up around that thing. So if you'd like to come help bridge Kubernetes to Eve, you know get involved. Uh, lots of cool stuff happening now, but again, we'll do it we'll do it in the right way. Um, super super important to have an open architecture. Yes, you can go build it on your own. We hear this all the time, it's like oh, I just need to decide if I'm going to build it on my own or not. If you build a silo, you miss out on the party, which is going to be this B to B to X to X, you know, interconnected ecosystem play. This is this is about everything connected. Maintain privacy, but if you build trust and you you set privacy terms that you you're okay with, the the ultimate goal is to start interconnecting different use cases and and building new business models off this sort of snowball effect in in the broader market. You know, again, imagine if the internet wasn't open, and you don't have to go crazy with it put the right tools in today and architect today from grounds up, start small and then scale over time. And then of course, Eve is, is really built to, to be that for the IoT edge. So outside of physically secure data centers, still capable of running apps, headless, you know, you know Linux based typically, but also I need to support Windows, uh, very different than a, a mobile device that uses Android. That's a very well established uh, ecosystem. So this is about doing that for the IoT edge. So with that, I don't know again if there's any questions. I think that um, we're probably you know, running out of time here. Uh, looks sorry about the video. Uh, um, and then there's also uh, go check out the LF Edge uh, YouTube channel. Um, there's a variety of different demos of the projects, and and you know we've just got a, a lot of good content there. So you know, we appreciate the the work that the Linux Foundation team does for us as a, a community. So. Um, yeah, and I see uh, May um, talked about the the, you know, the link for the video. So, um, you know, if there's any questions, um, I think that, uh, you know, it doesn't look like we have any additional questions. Must have explained it perfectly. Um, but, uh, yeah, reach out, get involved in the community. Um, if you have any other questions, you can always go there. I'll try to get on the Slack. You know, after this, I'll have got back to back to back me meetings. Um, but from there, it's, uh, you know, definitely look look for you guys in the community and would love to collaborate within the project. All right, thank you.